Okay, so how do we get Desmos to graph a composite function? I, I mean, you can do this with the, your graphing calculators too, but Desmos is pretty, pretty easy. So I'm what I'm doing here is, let's see, I'm doing this part of this video. I'll, link, I'll send you this link also. This is from a pre-calculus class that I'm teaching, that, that I teach, um, not teaching this semester, but and dealt with composite functions. And, and part of it was to ask them how to, I had asked the question to ask students to, uh, here's a function, here's an f of x, here's a g of x, find the domain, uh, find the composite function, and then find the domain of the f of g of x function. So I'll, I'll link to that video uh, also. But this video, I'm just trying to get, show you how to Desmos will graph composite functions. So I put the first function in is f, the second function is g. And then what you want to do to get it to graph a composite, say y equals f of g of x. And it's smart enough, uh, I gotta probably it's smart enough, I can just turn these off and it shows it shows me the composite function. Okay. So this is taking x squared. It's, it's, so it's taking this function dropping it into here. And what I'm seeing is, see, originally that, that function has a domain limitation is x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So then when is, when is x squared plus four um, less than zero or zero or less? And well, if you think about the algebra, where's my board? Think about the board. I'm basically solving this inequality I'm saying when does x squared plus four, when is that less than or equal to zero? Because this says x has to be greater than zero for, for the domain, right? Or, or, or open at zero to infinity, right? If we want to do interval notation. So this one, let's solve this equation. So where does x plus four, x squared plus four equals zero? Well, x squared equals negative four. And I know I can't take the square root of a negative number. So it's never, never is this is this equal to zero. And if you think about this being, this is the parabola that has been shifted up four, two, three, four, that graph will never be negative also, right? So that's why we're not seeing any vertical asymptotes in this graph. It's just coming along and, and, uh, and you know, it's looking fine because it's not undefined anywhere. We could hear, let me go back and click on the graph. Can we here better use a mouse? Let me try with a mouse here. See, we're not getting any undefined. We're not getting any holes. You know, there's no problem, there's no holes. So this is a continuous function. And even though the original function had a, uh, had a limitation, the composite function wipes that out. So. And that, then in that sense, it's kind of cool that it does that. Does that always happen? Well, what if I switch this up a little bit? What if I say here, let me clear this writing out. What if I clear, switch this up and say, now let's graph G of F of X. Now it's switching that, it's switching that and you see what's happening here. I'm getting a vertical asymptote and you see how that original, that original domain limitation that X has to be bigger than zero is still in place. Now, why does that happen algebraically? Well, I'm dropping in one over the square root of X, and then I'm squaring it plus four. And when I square that, it says X is, you know, whoops, 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 whoops sorry. One over X, because the one squared is one and the square root of X squared is one plus four. And, uh, in that case, you see how x can't be zero, and it's and it's uh, and it's there. So that that domain limitation still still exists. But this video, I'm kind of going beyond what I want to do with this video. I just wanted to show you how to graph composite because on this the practice test this week, I asked you to do that. Okay, so hopefully this helps you out, and hopefully it doesn't confuse you about composites, compositions of functions.